Miguel Gonzalez and today I'll be speaking on the topic of homophobia. Um, like Mark Twain said, it takes me three weeks to prepare a good impromptu speech, so bear with me, please. Now, I do see some important faces in the crowd. Others are not so important, but, but all together, um, but all the same, I'll try to make this as brief as I can for those of you that matter, right? Um, no, not right. Everybody in this room, we're all part of the same collective community. We all contribute to it in one way or another. So we all deserve the same treatment, right? Yeah, that's pretty much how it is. And that's kind of the idea I present to you today. So, firstly, so, so firstly, I'd like to take a moment to address some questions and preconceived notions that the audience might be having for me. Uh, one, it's a little bit off topic, but no, I'm actually not Asian. Um, two, uh, no, I'm actually not going to play the guitar. This is just a prop, and it has um, some un like it has some broken strings. Uh, I just read somewhere that the jerk with the guitar gets all the girls, so I thought the same law applied to getting your attention. Um, three, the band playing in the background is actually fun, but I'll talk about that later. Four, yes, I support LGBTQ rights. Five, that's lesbian, gay. Uh, bisexual, transgender, and queer, for those of you that were wondering. Most people don't know what the Q is. Um, and, uh, what, was, what number was I at? Okay. Uh, and the last one, no, I'm not uh, gay myself. Um, let me elaborate on that last point I made. Um, the youth of today has this idea that whoever supports uh, gay rights or sympathizes with homosexuals is homosexual themselves. It's like a playground case of the cooties, really. Like Mike Huckabee once said, there seems to be an ick factor within homosexuality for heterosexuals such, such as ourselves. Uh, it's like a playground case of the cooties, really. Um, for example, X was seen with Y, so X is infected by Y, or X doesn't hate Y, so X must be Y, right? Mm. X must be why. Um, this is also the reason we say a gay instead of is gay. Why was this? Okay, this is also the reason we say a gay instead of is gay. It's like saying somebody who is crabby is a crab. It's dehumanizing and it's not right, really. Um, though this shouldn't be taken negatively because it gives us heterosexual uh, activists and supporters of the cause a unique standpoint. We get to experience the plight of homosexuals and homosexuality. We, we have the unique opportunity to be socially oppressed. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so why am, I why am I happy about this? Well, it's because this social oppression helps to, helps to extend the idea that what I am fighting for and what I believe in is actually right. And one of the, one of the biggest arguments against homosexuality and gay, and gay marriage is the fact that gay, in many cases, marriage is defined as the union between a man and a woman, right? And this essentially turns gay marriage into an oxymoron like Big Shrimp or like my uh, colleague Jonathan explained earlier, Healthy America. Um, uh, though we have to remember, this isn't a fight for literacy. I'll leave that for another activist. There's, there's many more people who can fight for literacy. This is a fight for rights. Uh, though this, this shouldn't be, it shouldn't be taken that, that I'm saying that words don't matter because they certainly do. Because many times the homosexual, the, the homosexual agenda is, is hit unintendedly. Heterocentrism is whenever it is, the assumption is made that everybody that pertaining to a group is actually heterosexual and overlooking those who are homosexual. And forgetting to mention the fact that homosexuals are able to partake in a certain action too, such as marriage. Though this, is, though this is innocent in nature and doesn't mean any harm, it often leads to homophobic individuals saying that homosexuals weren't mentioned in the beginning and therefore shouldn't be mentioned in the end, uh, like marriage. Um, so you may be asking yourselves, what is homophobia then? Well, I took the liberty to look it up on the internet. For you geezers in the audience, the internet's a wonderful place to learn things about other stuff. Um, and Merriam-Webster actually defines it as the irrational fear, aversion to, or discrimination against homosexuals and homosexuality. 
Um, so, and judging by, judging by, I'm sorry, it keeps going ahead by itself. Okay, let's leave it there. Um, judging by the stress wrinkles and the receding hairlines, I see some of you are sporting. I infer that you are married. And if so, you may be asking yourself, oh, they can't marry. What a privilege, right? Um, what if I told you that marriage is among the least, the last things on homosexuals' minds in many parts of the world? For this, I take you on a trip to the beautiful land of Uganda. Now, Uganda's a beautiful place. I highly recommend visiting it in your lifetime. Unless you happen to be homosexual, uh, you'll get imprisoned. So, in that case, you may want to use Google Earth as your best bet. Um, this is because in Uganda, love can kill. The Anti-Homosexuality uh, Act was actually passed by the Parliament of Uganda on December 23rd of 2013. Well, and it was taken into, it was taken in, it took into effect on February 24th of the current year. While, while laws that already criminalized homosexuality were already in effect in Uganda, this act effectively broadened the amount of acts now considered crimes and lengthened the prison sentence from 14 years, the maximum prison sentence from 14 years in prison to life in prison. And the act actually first proposed the death penalty, but it was struck down by activists who cited that it was um, inhumane. Really? Getting killed for love? What's inhumane about that? Aside from a few attempts to stop it by activists, the law went on virtually unscathed. So, by a raise of hands, this is a poll now. You can raise your hands, all right? How many of you plan on having children or have children already? <laughs> this is North Shore, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so I can't see right because of the light, but I'd say that's like three of you. <laughs> um, how many of you enjoy having the option to have children? Quite a few again, right? How many of you believe that all children should have a permanent place to call home? I'd say that's almost all of you, right? Hater. Um, well, take a look at this. It's a big number, right? Especially considering that the amount of students going to this school is only about 3,500, and we're already considered among the biggest schools in the state of Texas. That's the amount of children in America longing for a place to call home. That's the amount of children in America longing for love. The love that most of us here take for granted, parental love. And the sad fact is that there are so many homosexual couples out there that would give anything to have nothing more than the ability to form a family. Sadly, there's people out there who say this is wrong and because of that, we have laws that prohibit it in some states. Like in the state of Louisiana, where a homosexual couple was, where the state actually um, Protect, uh, said that it was okay for them to withhold the birth certificate of a child that they adopted because their marriage was not consolidated in the state of Louisiana because they got married somewhere else. It's disgusting to think that we say we love our children, we love our youth, we, we want to prepare them to the future. Really? Where are they getting their love from whenever there's 520,000 of them without parents and more than enough love to, sp to go around? Um, so, some of you may be still telling yourselves, why should I even care about this? I'm not gay, I don't know anybody that's gay, or he's not gay, why does he care? Why is he standing up there ranting about something that doesn't affect him? Now, everybody in this room who believes that America is truly the land of the free, give it a round of applause. Okay? Now I want everybody who is African American, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, a felon, or homosexual to raise their hands. Okay, so everybody who isn't raising their hands, I want you to look at the nearest person who is raising their hands and give America the land of the free another round of applause. Look at them in their eyes. <laughs> now, 
We've always found a way to discriminate against people, but somehow we give ourselves the title of the land of the free. We're not. We're, we're the land of the free. Our, our freedom is based on who you are and where you live. Because in one state you could have the right to marry, in one state you could have the right to adopt, in another you have neither. So, I might have gotten through to some of you, and you may be asking yourselves, what can I do to help the cause, right? You could sign a petition. Like this petition, it's actually directed towards Nintendo, asking them to allow same-sex uh, relationships in one of their bigger online, like, Second Life games. The problem with, pet with signing petitions is people's own reluctance to sign them, saying that it's only one signature, their signature's not gonna matter, it's not gonna make a difference. But you see, all these people, they're all people who decided that they were gonna make a difference. They decided that their signature did matter. And because of them, we're making changes. Another, another thing, another reason people don't want to sign the petition is because they say, oh, it's a waste of time, right? Because it doesn't matter. I signed this petition standing, uh, standing up for transgendered people. It literally took me less, I blurred out my information, y'all can't stalk me. Um, I, um, it's, there's, it's standing up for transgendered people and it literally took me less than a minute. So what's your excuse? That, that's roughly the same amount of time that those silly little cat videos on YouTube last. So go sign one. You could go to a pride parade. Um, I've never personally been to one. Uh, I hear they're a lot of fun. I hear they're like really jolly and gay. Um, there's actually one that's gonna be held here on the 8th. Now I know some of you seniors have something to do that day. I know some of you are, like you, you, have, you have predetermined plans. But for those of you that aren't seniors or for those seniors that sadly have nothing to do that day, i.e. graduation, um, don't worry, you'll get them next time. There's always another year. Um, but for those of you who have nothing to do that day, you could turn around and come to this event. Uh, showcase your pride in the cause, hence the name of the pride parade. <laughs> uh, um, showcase your pride, gay or not gay. They, they, I'm pretty sure they accept anybody. Um, you could join an organization. There's a lot of organizations already out there that support this cause, such as the Ally Coalition. Now, the Ally Coalition's website, like I said, the internet's a wonderful thing. You older audience members should definitely get to know it. Um, uh, I don't know how to use the laser, but okay. Um, the Ally Coalition's website actually has a lot of information and statistics over uh, pertaining to homosexuality in different states. You can click on your state, it'll tell you what's what. Um, it was actually founded by the band Fun, and so without further ado, let's hear something from them. What's up, this is Nate. I'm Jack. I'm Andrew. We are the band Fun, and we're here to help spread an important message about equality. Human rights are universal. Everyone everywhere is entitled to the same rights, and that includes LGBT people. Attitudes all over the world are changing and governments are starting to make the necessary reform. We as musicians stand with the LGBT community in any way we possibly can. Together, we have the ability to make the world a more equal place. Go to unfe.org now and take the free and equal pledge. Okay. So I actually contacted uh, ba the band Fun and got in touch with one of their representatives and they sent me this video. Uh, they sent me this video actually two days before it went on their website. And they told me they were really excited about me giving this speech and me giving this presentation. I was dumbfounded. They, I, I, here I was thinking that I wasn't gonna make a difference because it was only a small group of people. I started out doing this presentation to my AP English teacher in the classroom thinking I wouldn't get anything more than an 80 because that's usually what I make. Um, <laughs> I thought I wouldn't do anything, and here, here I was getting praised by my favorite band in the world for doing something that they believed in as well. Um, so, why should you stand up for these people? Why? Because there's people out there who want to have their love consolidated, who want to have it validated by the state they live in. Because there's people out there who want the same titles and the same rights as everybody else. 
because there's kids out there longing for parents. But most of all, because it's all fun and gay until someone loses their rights. Thank you.